captured as they are by whatever actions are underway, composers seem oblivious to the fatigue and even the pain that accompanies many of their activities. It is not that they are hardened to these difficulties as much as it is that absorbed and excited and wholly engaged by an action, they simply do not notice the difficulties. In this, the ISFP is similar to other artisans and different from all the other types. And when I read that, the first thing I think about is how many times um, I have been involved in something like the stuff I was talking about earlier, um, you know, music charts or um, radio stuff or chatting online, um, just any, any of these things that I could be doing well into the night, like, I mean, you know, I suddenly look and see that it's 4 a.m., and I've been doing whatever it is, and sometimes I can go hours, like, and, and I haven't gone to the bathroom or drank any water or anything, you know, and I'll suddenly realize, or eat anything, I'll suddenly realize I'm starving, I'm really, really thirsty, and I've needed to pee for, like, four hours, and that's, you know, what this is talking about. It's, it was so hilarious when I read that the first time, because I was like, Wow, I mean, you know, of all the things that I had read about personalities or anything like that, you know, that kind of categorize people or anything, I had never read something before that particular part um, that talked about that aspect. <laughs> and I hadn't thought about it, really, the fact that I do that. It, just, it hadn't been something that, you know, except at the time, like when I would... um you know, suddenly realize it was 4 a.m. and I had to be at work at 8 or, you know, <laughs> and, or, or even if I didn't have to work, if I had to get my son up and get him to school or things like that. And at the time, it would be like, man, I'm such an idiot. Why did I do this again? You know, I got to not do this. <laughs> and then, you know, it would happen again, undoubtedly, whatever it was. And I've done that less lately <laughs> but I've gone through it kind of phases you know where I do that more and more and it's very possible like I said um, and like the book said when I'm wrapped up in something it's not like I sit there and, and go well you know I'm choosing to stay up or choosing to um, not eat or not do these things. It just happens because I am that consumed by whatever it is that I'm into at the time. Um, and it's almost never planned. That's, that's the thing is it's not like I say, well, you know, I'm going to do a 16 hour marathon of watching the Simpsons or something like that. You know, I very rarely do that. Like plan any length of time of doing something. It always starts as this feels like a fun thing to do now and then like nine hours later I'm still doing whatever it is because I it I really and I talked about this before in another entry that it's almost as if it feels like I won't ever get the chance again. It really does feel like, you know, in the moment that I'm experiencing something like this there's not going to be a tomorrow. There's not going to be a next week. There's not going to be an opportunity to come back to this. You know, uh, the age of computers, you could say, has given me the outlet to save things when I'm not finished with them, but it's still, like, against my instincts to do that. Like, what I really want to do is keep going, as long as it's interesting to me. And I still have consciousness, <laughs> because I have... Pretty much, I tell people that I, I don't really ever go to sleep. I pretty much just pass out. You know, that's usually, like, when I try to go to sleep, I can't. And, uh, you know, people call that insomnia. I just call it life, you know, in terms of when my attempt is to try to make myself relax and go to sleep, it's I, I can't do it. Um, I have to make myself exhausted from whatever it is that I've done. Now, when you're a single parent of a very active 10-year-old boy, it's not too difficult to exhaust yourself. <laughs> and, you know, and I've got a full-time job, too, so 
most of the time, you know, lately, I've done a much better job of getting to bed at a reasonable time and getting a pretty good amount of sleep. Not good compared to some people <laughs> and what they so-called, you know, recommend when they say eight or more hours of sleep. It's pretty rare that I get more than eight hours of sleep. It happens occasionally. Um, and on the weekends, I'll sometimes sleep longer than that. And not even really on purpose. Like, I just... I, it's too easy for me to be like, it's Saturday, I don't have to get up. <laughs> I did that this morning. Um, even though I really did need to get up. And eventually I did. And I still got Morgan to his uh, Saturday detention, basically on time. So... Um, but, you know, I just didn't have time to do everything I wanted to do before that. Anyway, so... That particular paragraph um, really rung true for me because I thought about all of the times where I neglected everything. You know, like the book says, oblivious to the fatigue and the pain that accompanies many of other activities. And, you know, you can read something like that and think of people who do really, you know, daredevilish type things. But it's not just about that, you know, that's kind of what part of what I hope to do here was provide some examples of things that wouldn't be considered uh, especially fatiguing or painful things, but yet can bring about both of those if done continuously for many hours without any kind of um, break or adjustment, um, you know, and I've frequently done that in all kinds of things, um, especially on the internet. Once I had that at my disposal, then, then yeah, that kind of thing, um, really, the, it really increased. <laughs> I was trying to think of the word for, you know, get bigger. <laughs> um, when I first had the internet available at home was about 1995, and my brother, my older brother, uh, had this computer that he was able to get online with, and he showed me about IRC, which is still being used today, though, you know, some of the kids there on the internet may not know much about it, because there's all these other avenues of chatting now that didn't exist back then, but at that time, anyway, IRC was pretty much the number one tool for communication of, you know, chat when it came to people online, uh, so, you know, there would be different rooms formed by interests, and some just by location, or whatever it is, you know, that, and, um, that was really the beginning of my excessive internet usage, <laughs> <laughs> was the days when I first got into IRC. And it was also another opportunity for me to do one thing that I love doing, which is character creation and role-playing. Because one of the first things I did online was, and I'm going to forget what the um, letter stood for, but it was a thing called a mush. Um, and I think, actually, the original type was called MUD, which was, I think was multi-user dimension, maybe? I, I'm not sure if the D, what the D actually stood for, but... And then MUSH was an extension, an extension of that, and I don't remember what the SH stood for, but, um... It was basically a thing created on an internet server where people could log in and create characters and rooms and, um... have adventures, so to speak. And some of them were much more structured and and um, organized than others. You had um, ones that were... I think the difference between the muds and the mushes, if I remember, was the muds were, like, usually designed to be a text version of something like people know today, like World of Warcraft, you know, something where you had people that got together for specific adventures and role-playing, and it was a, more of an organized thing. Um, and mushes was a little bit more informal, I think. Informal? I mean, they, they, I think they were more... Um, a lot of times just sort of became chat avenues. But people still used them for some role-playing aspects, and that was the part that was best for me, because I liked chatting with people, but very rarely as myself, because I didn't find myself interesting. So 
uh, you know, small talk about what was I was doing in my life was not really that interesting to me in terms of I wasn't going to get on there and be like, yeah, my name's Jeff, and today I went to school and um, went to work, and yeah, nothing interesting happened. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any interest in that. Um, but I did enjoy creating characters that were other people that would talk about whatever little interesting chat things happened to them that day. And it wasn't telling those kind of things that was the thrilling part. It was the interaction with other people in as that character and being able to react to what I was presented with to improvise and come up with responses in the guise of the character I was portraying. And I didn't stop at the mush and, and things that were sort of organized to do role-playing. When I got a chance to go on IRC, that was a whole new avenue for this because it was something where I could suddenly interact with a lot of people who really were being themselves and get some more genuine reactions to the things that I said in character. And yeah, it's real easy to say, well, some of them might have been doing the same thing and being characters in, but that doesn't really matter. All that matters is that it was a thrill to me to get the opportunity to do that and to just... It was an escape, I think, from my real life, but it wasn't like this you know, thing where... I was in a fantasy world like, you know, I didn't have any grip on reality. I did, and in, it was just sort of like an alternate reality that existed, you know, within the scope of my life. It was what was fun. The other stuff was like, well, i got to go to my job and get my paycheck, otherwise I can't eat. But what I really looked forward to was getting to have fun on the computer and, and interacting with people and and role-playing and doing all that kind of stuff. And so I went through a period of time where that was probably my biggest interest. And, and you know, again, that's just one more example. You know, the stuff I did with music charts, uh, there, was a, there was a period of time where writing poetry and lyrics was a thing that I, in a, any time I had spare time, I would... And good gracious, and you want to talk about time spent on stuff where you're not aware of what's going on, the fatigue and the pain and things like that. I had one poem that I started writing probably about 10 o'clock at night, I think, and finished like a few minutes after 2 a.m. Like, it literally took me four hours to write. And it was, I believe, eight pages front and back. Um, and, you know, in, in that time, not once did I get up get a drink of water, get anything to eat, go to the bathroom, do anything, because it was like everything I was doing, I was just writing for exactly what was in my head and my heart, it was just spewing forth, going onto the page in pen form, didn't realize that my hand was hurting until I was finished, didn't realize that I was sweating, <laughs> that I needed to go to the bathroom really badly, like, didn't realize, you know, it was probably like 80 degrees or something, you know, the air conditioner wasn't working too well or wasn't, you know, cool enough. Stuff like that, I mean, again, it just, it wasn't, didn't factor in, because what I was doing was something that was more intense than that. It was, it fought off whatever that was. As I'm sitting here telling you this, I'm realizing that it's starting to be kind of hot in here. <laughs> And not just me. I mean, I'm not just saying that because of my extremely sexy voice. I mean, it really feels physically hot. And it's probably because I'm, you know, sitting so close to the computer screen. But but exactly my point is that, you know, when I'm saying all this stuff, like, I didn't really realize that until now. And it's probably been that way for several minutes. Also, I'm kind of leaning against the desk the computer's on, and my elbows are starting to hurt, and my um, finger that's holding the place in my book and my leg, you know, these things that for the last 14 minutes or so I've been ignoring because the most important thing was to talk about this. So in doing so, I have just given another example as I'm speaking <laughs> of this very thing that I've been talking about. So that's the funny 
part to me, the most funny part, is how self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> this entire thing is in terms of pers my own personality qualities and stuff is that as I'm talking about them, some of them play out even in the fact that I'm talking about them. So, anyway, I said a lot about that one paragraph, but I kept thinking of other things to talk about, and probably will again in the future, but that's the end of that one for now.